Shalom. Before I get started with this lesson, I want to give all honor, praise, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Double honor to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone that taught me this truth and that rule well. And peace and salutation to the elect that's out here laboring in all truth and sincerity to you. I say Shalom. This is Brother Amawan Ariyah from GMS Charlotte. Coming back with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. And pretty much in this lesson, I want to speak on, you know, the situation that's going on over there in Israel. You know, you had the uh, the attack, you know, uh, on the land of Israel by, I believe, it was the the uh, Palestinians. You know, which, you know, as more information is coming out, it is beginning to look like it was a a stage psyop, okay, because we know that these uh, small hats, man. They are behind the scenes running everything, all right? And they have, you know, uh, controlled opposition in their back pocket to pretty much, you know, stir up the emotions of the people around the world to, you know, pretty much, you know, garner sympathy for them. But at the end of the day, you know, this uh, this attack that we've seen take place on Saturday just further cements the proof that, they are not the people of the uh, of the Most High, man. They are not the true Israelites, man, okay? Because prophecy states that if the true Jews, all right, the true people of the Lord were in that land, all right, there would be no war in the earth. Yet, you know, like I said, you had this attack that took place, all right, when they're saying it's, um, you know, bodies, you know, continually to increase, all right, and it's been conflict ever since those uh, gutter rats have been over in that land. But like we said, man, uh, 2 Corinthians 2 and 11 tells you that we're not ignorant of Satan's devices, man. So, you know, as we get more details on exactly what is taking place over there, like I said, this just further cements that these people in that land are not the chosen people, okay? Because even in their name itself, all right, Israeli. All right, let me get this. I'm going to actually put this on the screen. When you look up Israeli, as it says, citizen of the state of Israel, it says, also used in English as the adjective, it, dis it distinguishes the citizens of the modern state from the ancient people who had been known in English since 14th century as Israelites. All right. And that's why we, you know, entitle them the 1948ers, man, okay, because they, you know, uh, acquired that land, you know, with the uh, the Balfour Declaration, man, all right, to where they, you know, established the Jewish state, and they've been calling themselves the, uh, you know, you know, Jewish, which we know that the uh, prefix, you know, ish, means to be like or pertain to, so they're calling themselves the real Jews, but they, they call themselves Jewish, man. All right, but the real Jews actually stem from all right the tribe of Judah, all right, which the scriptures describe the tribe of Judah as black men, all right, and a lot of the conflict that you see taking place is because you know going back to um what's the dude's name um the uh, Egyptian president. Let me let me pull his name up real quick. All right. Y'all bear with me. Niggas. Egypt. Gamal Abdur Nasir. All right, because since those, um, those small has, you know, got that land over there. They've been at war with the Palestinians ever since, man. All right. So you had this uh, president, uh, Gamal Abdul Nasser, make this statement. He says, when asked about the about peace in the Middle East, the late president of Egypt, Gamal Abdul Nasser, stated, the Jews will never be able to live here in peace because they left here black but came back white. All right. And like I said, prophecy lets us know that these people are not the true people of, of the Lord because, 
Like I said, man, there's war going on in that land that has happened ever since they took place. And when you actually do the research, all right, war actually, you know, uh, well, a bomb actually went off, all right, that night that they actually established the Jewish state, man. But, you know, nonetheless, let's go into some scriptures just to further, you know, harp on this point as, you know, disproving, you know, that these people are truly the chosen people of the Lord. All right, so this is Revelation 2 and 9. It reads, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Now, stopping right here, the scripture says, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. Okay, now, you know, the nation of Israel is the furthest thing from poor because for them to be, you know, the uh, the children of Israel, all right, the, the, the real JWs, they are the biggest welfare state in the whole country where each year they receive millions of dollars in aid all right, for them, you know, going through, you know, what they claim is the uh, the hollow hoax, all right, which has been proven to be false, man, all right, the 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 narrative that they, you know, spin around, you know, the whole situation with Hitler, all right, the facts that came out and showed that that was a hoax, man, that never happened the way they described it, man, okay, but as I said, they're not, they're not, uh, they don't fit this prophecy, man, it says, I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And who is this uh, speaking of, man? The nation of Israel, the true nation of Israel, which is you so-called Negro, Latino, Native Americans. Because what makes us rich, all right, is our uh, is our blessing that we receive from the Lord. All right, we're rich in faith, man. All right, we're rich in, you know, uh, the spirit and also the blessings that is, that's going to uh, await for us when we in, enter into the kingdom of heaven, man. Okay? It says, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not but all the synagogue of Satan, okay? And we know those people in that land calling themselves Jews, they are not actually Israelites, all right? That's why they call themselves Israeli or Jewish, all right? But they are the synagogue of Satan. They are the chief house of Satan, you know, which goes by their biblical nationality as Esau, Edom, but specifically, all right, the chief tribe of Edom, which is known as the Amalekites in the scriptures, man. That's who you, uh, you people are over in that land. Now, you have some all right, Israelites that are amongst those uh, so-called looking small hats, but their spirit actually goes back to Israelites, man. But the good majority of them over there are, are Amalekites, man, okay? And they've been trying to hide their identity, all right, through, uh, through the years, through their lies and deception, all right? And they put, you know, these different, um, they put these different, you know, things, you know, uh, these these safeguards up to pretty much protect our identity because they don't want the the world to know that they come from the tribe of Edom because admitting that they come from the tribe of Edom is admitting that Yahabashim Yahashai hate, uh, hates them and they're, they're uh, destined for destruction, man. Okay, this is Malachi chapter 1, verse 1. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Okay, so the Most High hates Esau, man. All right, and that never changed, man. Okay, but Esau's been trying to hide from that, uh, you know, from his uh, uh, his biblical nationality. This is why he calls himself, you know, all these different names throughout history. All right, the Caucasians, all right, the uh, the 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 Turks, the Russians, you know, they they went and you know stole these different lands and took on those different name, uh, those different nationalities, all to hide themselves from being the true biblical Edomites, man. All right, but then when you go into the um, was it the the Illuminated uh, uh Rothschilds? All right, they know that they are the um, the tribe of Edom. All right, and they're doing everything that you see going on on the earth because they want to get their birthright back because when you go into the book of Genesis 27, or it's like in Genesis 25, Esau lost his birthright when he sold it to Jacob for that uh, that pottage and red meat, okay? So the Most High hates Esau, man, and, and he's going to hate Esau, all right, forever, as it's going to say. It says, whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, 
they shall build, but I will throw down. They shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against the Lord have like it. And the people against whom the Lord have Indian nation forever. Right. So the Lord has a righteous anger against you, Edomites, because you are the wicked that the Bible speaks of. This is why it, it describes you as the border of wickedness, because everywhere you devils go, I right, wickedness followed. All right. And that trail they've tried to hide. But your history speaks for itself, man, because when you go into. All right. Their history going back until uh, the beginning of the Greeks. All right. You had Alexander the Great or who they call the Great. All right. Under him. Scriptures say this. All right. This is first Maccabees chapter one, verse seven. So Alexander reigned 12 years and then died and his servants bear rule every one in his place. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. So did their sons after them many years and evils were multiplied in the earth. So when you look up Esau's history, everywhere he has went, all right, evils has went out. And the more he spread himself, the more wickedness, all right, multiply in the earth, man. All right. So when it comes to them, uh, them rats going and taking over the Holy Land of Israel. All right. It has always been conflict. All right. Over in that area, because as uh, Gamal Abdur Nasser said, OK, there would never be peace over in the Middle East because the true people. All right. Left black and came back white because those people over in that land. All right. They stole that land. OK. And came up with the Balfour Declaration, all right, as a justifiable reason for them to, you know, occupy that land, which they used, all right, World War II as the catalyst to, to you know, bring forth, you know, the opportunity for them to go into that land. And they've been over there ever since, man. All right. But as as I said, it's been a, a continuous, continuous war, you know, with uh, the Palestinians over there, all right, who are the uh the so called Arabs, man, who are also, you know, uh don't belong in that land, man. Okay. But when you look at the conflict of what, you know, has been taking place over there, okay, those uh those damn Amalekites, all right, have been, you know, taking more and more of the land from the Palestinians, all right, which is why that conflict is uh, you know, going on the way it is, because they're both fighting for a land that isn't theirs, man. But the Most High is stirring that spirit up on those Ishmaelites as well as the uh, other nations that's over there because you got Ham and other nations over there too. But the main ones are, are uh, Ishmael and, and Amalek, okay? But the Lord is putting the spirit on, on you know, Am uh, not Amalek, Saki, um, Ishmael and some of those Egyptians, all right, to continually, you know, um, come against Esau, man. All right, because this is the Lord making making uh true on his promise of how he's going to, you know, continually be against Amalek, man. Okay, this is Exodus 17 and 16. For he said, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord, that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. So, hey, the, the Lord is always against you devils, man. All right, and this is why it's always conflict dealing with you devils because the Most High is continually getting with you, man. All right. So no matter what you devils do, all right, it th there's always going to be conflict, all right, until you are put down because your wicked asses are are trying to establish this new world order and put everybody in subjection. But the Most High is going to meet you at every turn, all right, to pretty much, you know, put you in straits, as, as it says in the, in the book of Job, chapter 20, all right? But this is Isaiah 57 and 21. It reads, there is no peace, save, the, save my power, to the wicked. All right. This is why you constantly are hearing about, you know, uh, 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 the people over there getting bombed, you know, continuous uh, uh, fighting because the most high uh, is not going to allow you devils to have any peace, man. All right. And that's going all the way up until all right, Babylon the Great is, is, is taken down, man. OK, because he's never going to allow you devils to get comfortable. You're never going to be able to put your feet up in, in, in comfort because, look, this is this is your reign. And the Most High has has your purpose set up, all right, to punish two thirds of the nation of Israel, and you know, and to take peace away from the earth for the sake of prophecy. But it tells you that in Proverbs uh, chapter sixteen, that the Lord created you for the day of evil. Okay, so He's using you to stir up problems in the earth 
so that these other nations can be stirred up and come against you as well, man. So this this is why, since Esau has came into power, you know, it, it's always been war on the earth. But if you are the true nation of Israel, and when Israel gets back in that land, the prophecy tells you, all right, that there was going to be peace. There's no peace. Esau doesn't know how to, you know, uh, how to, you know, have peace, man. Okay, because we know that Esau uses Babylon the Great, you know, as as the means for him to push forward his agenda. And ever since Babylon the Great was established as a country, it has been the war almost every year since its inception, man. You know, just like how over in the land of Israel, since they got over there, there has been war ever since, man. So where is the peace at? That you devil's supposed to be bringing, if you are the true people of the Most High, man. Okay, this is uh, Ezekiel thirty-six and two. Thus say of Yahweh by Shem Shah, because the enemy have said against you, Aha, even the agent high places are in our possession, and that's what these devils have. You know, uh, that's what they've done. All right, they took our land. All right, because we were exiled from the uh, from the Holy Land because we went off and sinned against Yahweh by Shem Shah. Therefore. The Lord kicked us out of the Holy Land. All right, but you devils have, you know, took it upon yourself to occupy that land under your own nefarious means. And, and you and you boast about how you the chosen people. All right, that's why, all right, you, you, you know, uh, you can't speak ill against the Amalekites, man. All right, because they have so many safeguards set up to where they, they hide themselves, even though all the wickedness is being uh, exposed. And they, you know, are, are showing that through the ADL. All right. They have that term uh, anti-Semitism. All right. Which is, like I said, that safeguard. So anytime that you speak out against anything that these devils do, they, you know, label you anti-Semitic. All right. And force you to pretty much, you know, uh, be silenced or apologize. All right. For calling these devils out for what they've done, man. OK. But the truth is out. All right. You don't belong in that land, man. You are not the chosen people of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, man. All right. This is Zechariah 9 and 6. It says, A bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. Right? And when you go into where Ashdod is, Ashdod is a city in the land of Israel, man. And it says, A bastard shall dwell in that land because, hey, those, those people over in that land are not the true people of the Lord, man. Okay? Because they're, hey, look, look what's going on over there, man. All right? If you are the true chosen people of the Most High, all right, why is wickedness coming out from that land why why is the biggest mo parade all right known as pink city you know held in the land of israel man why why is the majority of those uh small hats over there you know uh they atheists man okay why don't they call upon the most high all right when you hear them speak about yahweh they call him hashem they don't even speak on the name man all right they tell you that the name is too holy to say but all throughout the scriptures the Lord, you know, makes makes it known that hey, Israel will be calling on his name in that time, man. Okay. But showing you you don't you don't belong over there, man. All right. Hey, y'all over there eating kosher pig, you know. Hey, you've made the land so barren to where you have to actually import, you know, different, you know, uh, uh things over there, such as the trees and you know, different crops, because you destroyed the you destroyed the land, man. This is why when Yahweh Bashim Yahushua returns, man. All right, along with Babylon the Great, the land of Israel is going to be hit by ICBM nuclear missiles too because that land needs to be cleansed as well, man. All right, but this just further cements the fact that those people over there are not the true, you know, Israelites, man. All right, so I'm going to uh, go back to Ezekiel 36 and I'm going to jump down to verse 5. It says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah, surely in the fire of my jealousy, have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia? And Idumia is the uh, the Greek way of saying Edom, which have appointed my land into, into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with the spiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. All right. And that's, you know, that took place. OK, during uh, with the that the Balfour Declaration, 1948. All right. And they, you know, uh, uh, took it upon themselves to occupy that land. All right. When the prophecy states that the true Israelites will be in that land by the Lord. All right. And here's the proof of that. This is Isaiah 14 and 1. For the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel 
and set them in their own land. The Lord said he was going to set us in our land. All right. Not us going over there with a uh, with a document. All right. Flying on, on no damn plane. No, the Lord himself was going to set us back up in the land of Israel, man. And the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And what's the, the strangers talking about, man? All right. Now, all nations. OK, the strangers are the Israelite foreigners. All right. Who are scattered all throughout the four corners of the earth. But when your house shall returns, all right, he's going to uh, uh, gather up his elect. All right. And that giant fathership and, and set us back in our land. All right. And when we're set back up, OK, we will establish our right, the law, statute and commandments throughout the uh throughout the world and that's how you will know the true uh the true chosen people are in that land but you're not seeing that taking place right now man all right this is isaiah 2 and 1 it says the word that isaiah the son of amos saw concerning judah and jerusalem and that shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. Now, is that being taking place now? Hell no, man. Nobody's coming to seek out uh uh you uh you Amalekites, all right? Because first of all, they're not even, you know, uh, uh establishing the Lord's ways, man. All right, these devils follow after what you uh what you call the Talmud, all right, which goes uh, directly against the scriptures, man. Okay? But it says that the, the mountain of the Lord's house will be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. Because it won't, when the nation of Israel, the true Israelites get back into that land, OK, all right, we will be the, the governing body that's going to establish all right, the, the Lord's ways until the until the rest of the world. man. All right. Verse three. And many people shall go and say, come ye. And let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word from the Lord of from Jerusalem. And like I said, that's not happening now. Nobody's seeking out any any uh, not wisdom, knowledge, or understanding from you damn devils, man. Because like I said, you don't even uh, follow the Lord's ways, man. All right, when you look into the Talmud, man, the Talmud is a completely wicked book, man. All right, because in the Talmud, it tells you that you can deal with little boys, all right, little girls, man, okay? It tells you that, uh, you know, the pedoism, you know, that's that's uh, okay according to the Talmud. All right, when they, you know, do uh, the circumcision, those nasty-ass devils over there, they actually, you know, uh, take off the foreskin off the off the babies with their mouth and suck off the, uh, the, the baby's, you know, rod, man. You know, just to give a few examples, man. So to show you, man, those people are are not the Lord's people, man. All right, but when the Israelites are in the uh, in the uh, in the Holy Land, all right, as the Lord puts us there, we will establish the law, all right, and the nations will be coming to seek us out for that wisdom on how to keep the law better, man. All right, but as of right now, you're not seeing that taking place, man. Okay, and He shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. And that's a clear cut, you know, especially dealing with this situation. Because how are you, the children of, uh, of the Most High, you're over there partying up and then you get invaded. All right. By motherfuckers parasailing into the land. All right. Rolling up, you know, uh, ambushing you. That's not going to happen to the true people of Yahweh by Shem Shai, man. All right. But furthermore, all right, when the true Israelites are in, are in the power seat, no nation will have war with each other anymore, man. It's not going to be any any uh, any uh need for war because the Israelites will have, you know, supreme authority over everything. And there's not going to be any, you know, uh, uh weapons for war anymore, man, because Israel will have total sovereignty and nobody will be able to come against us, man, because we're going to be immortal. All right. That in itself lets you know that they're, uh, they're not the people, man. All right. The Israelites and when they're in the land of Israel will not die, man. All right. This is Revelation 21 and one. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. All right. And that's talking about after Esau, Edom's rulership is done away with Babylon, the, uh, the greatest destroyed. 
All right, that new that new heaven and new earth is going into the kingdom of heaven. Okay, it says, and I John saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. That's the nation of Israel. You know, starting with the uh, the elect. All right, the elect will be coming out of the chariots with those new immortal bodies, man. Okay, with the laws uh, uh, putting our inward parts to where we'll be immortal because we'll never sin again, man. And they heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the Most High is with men, and he shall dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and the Most High himself shall be with them and be their power. And the Most High shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. So if they are the true people of the Most High, then why are you seeing videos all right, of dead bodies all right, you seeing people in despair over there crying, you know, uh, uh, bewailing themselves, man, because they're in terror because those aren't the true people of the Lord, man. All right, those are imposters, all right, who have been, who have been you know, uh, placed in that land for the sake of prophecy, man. All right, but the Most High is, is beginning, all right, to uh, to visit you, visit you devils more and more because we are, uh, are getting closer to that time to where the Lord is about to destroy these devils, man. All right. So going back, Isaiah 2 and 4, and he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people because we're, when we establish the laws, man, all right, when you nations go off and you and you break the law, man, all right, we're going to be right there to judge you, man, all right? Like the scripture tells you, we're going to have that uh, that rod of iron, all right, it's going to break you nations to shivers, man, okay? It says, and they shall beat their swords in the plowshares and their spears in the pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. And the war is still going on to this day, which shows you that the true people of the Most High are not in that land, man. All right? Because, hey, the, the world is suffering because of war, man. All right? Because these devils have never had a, a moment of peace since they came into power, man. All right? Proverbs 29 and 2. Because hey, before I even get to this, when you go into these different wars, it has came out that all these wars were funded by the bankers. This is why... Hey, the they, when when the money gets low, they they go to war, man. All right, because war is is a, a racketeer business, man, and, and the elites get get rich off of it because the rich, uh, it's like the bankers fund both sides of the war. So you see in World War One, World War Two, and eventually World War Three, these are all wars, world wars orchestrated by the bankers. This is why when you go into um, the Albert Pike plan. All right, he detailed exactly, you know, how uh, the, the theater of war would take place. And this is why you're seeing everything play out just like he wrote in that book, Morals and Dogmas, man. All right, with detail how there will be three wars war. And the World War Three will be the war to end all war because that will be the elites, you know, pretty much, you know, establishing a new world order. All right, after World War Three, because according to them, after World War Three, all right, that will pretty much, you know, send the world back to the Stone Age, and they're going to rise up from the ashes to, to uh, claim their uh, their throne, you know, as the, as the ruling nation on the earth. But guess what? The, 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 uh, the prophecy states that, man, World War III is going to be the end of Esau's ruling, man. All right? So you devils are, are uh, vastly mistaken, man. Okay? This is Proverbs 29 and 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn, right? Because they, the war is in a state of uh, mourning right now because the wicked is ruling, man. You you, uh, you Edomites, you so-called white people, all right, mainly you uh, you small hatters, man. You 1948ers, man. You big nose, whatever, you know, names you got, uh, we got, we call you gutter rats. All right, you are ruling and the world is mourning because you don't operate, all right, in the manner of righteousness, man, because you are the wicked. All right, but when the when the righteous are in authority, all right, the people will be rejoicing because hey, the world will be at peace, man. There will be no more war. There will be no more, uh, you know, pretty much, you know, you devils ruling in unrighteousness, man. All right, because hey, when the Israelites get into the kingdom, even though we're going to have you nations under subjection, all right, you still, you know, are going to experience the kingdom of heaven, man, because the earth is going to go back to the natural state it was created to be in, man. All right, but under these devils' rule. All right, they are, uh, you know, putting the earth in the state of, uh, of of a prison planet 
you know, hoarding all the res uh, resources to themselves, and the people are suffering for it, man. Everybody's crying out because you devils are mismanaging the earth, man. All right, so the earth is in, in dire need of a new ruler, and that that ruler is the Israelites, man. All right, like it tells you in Romans chapter eight. All right, the uh, the whole creation moaneth, or yeah, the whole creation uh, groaneth, because the true people of the Lord are not in the power seat, man. Okay. So this is Sirach chapter 10 and 1. A wise judge will instruct his people and the government of a prudent man is well ordered. And as we see, Esau, it, it does not fit that, man. All right. And this, this devil's whole uh, kingdom setup is, is totally, you know, uh, mismanaged, man. All right. Because he doesn't take the, uh, the the orders of the Lord, which is the law, statute, commandments. All right. Psalms 10 and Job 21 tells you that Esau doesn't desire the ways of the Most High, all right, which is the true order of how you rule a, a, a kingdom, man, all right, under his wisdom, all right, this devil rejects wisdom, man, okay, because he's the wicked, verse 2, as the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers, and what manner of man the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein, so the people take on the vibration of the ruler, and the world is in the most wicked state it's ever been, because the rulers of this world are the wicked men, all right? They are literally the physical incarnate of Satan. It says, an unwise king destroyeth his people, but through the prudence of them which are in authority, the city shall be inhabited, and, and the world is suffering because Esau is an unwise king, and what makes him an unwise king? Like I said, they reject the wisdom of the Lord, all right? Therefore, all right, his subjects are, are pretty much, you know, suffering, under his rule, because only only a, an idiot would destroy, all right, the very servants and the very kingdom, all right, that he's supposed to be ruling, man. All right, this shows you that this man is not fit to rule. It says the power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord, and in due time he will set up over it one that is profitable. And this is why we are seeing everything taking place, because the Most High is exposing this man, all right? He's showing the world that he's not who he says he is, man. And the Lord is, is, is slowly but surely, all right, taking this man out of power, man, all right? And he's going to, all right, set up the one that's truly profitable for the earth, which is the Israelites, man, okay? So we jump down to verse 8. It says, because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. And this is what we're seeing, all right? Esau is being taken down so that the nation of Israel can, you know, Rise up and take that rightful place as being the true kings of the earth, man. All right. So I just wanted to, you know, do this lesson real quick. All right. Just to, you know, hammer home the fact that what you're seeing taking place over there in the land of Israel. All right. Is, is cemented proof to show the world that those are not the true people of the Lord, man. All right. They're imposters, man. Okay. So with that, I'm going to end this lesson. I want to give all honor, praise, and glory to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Akakwadash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone that taught me this truth and that rule well. And peace and salutation to the elect. Until next time I say Shalom.